Welcome again. This time we're, we're going to be covering Fermat's little theorem. Now, before we delve into the uh, details of what it, what it is and why it's useful, let's remind ourselves of what we uh, studied before. So remember the prime numbers. Um, <coughs> we've learned what prime numbers are and to check the primality or the primeness of a number some people call it primality some people call it primeness but it's the same thing to check whether a given number is prime or not now uh, in prime numbers one could be considered prime but it's not very useful to uh, to use it as a prime number anyway and the co-primeness of numbers so there's a difference between primeness and co-primeness primeness can be a property of one number, whereas co-primeness, the co-prefix indicates that it's between two or more numbers. So, co-primeness is the relationship between two numbers. Some people call it co-primeness, or some people can say, for example, uh, um, you know, one number is co-prime with or to another number, or they say it's relatively prime to another number. So, co-prime co -prime numbers or relatively prime numbers is the same expression. So, anyway, a prime number is co-prime. Or, or relatively prime to any other number other than itself and one. So to check whether two number two numbers are co-prime or not, their GCD needs to be one. So the greatest common divisor of the two numbers is actually one. Anyway, I have uh, uh, more than one video on this. Just look up uh, in my YouTube channel. Try to find my videos on prime numbers, on comp on uh, co-primeness and on integer arithmetic in general. Now, something you must be familiar with, I'm sure you are, uh, which is prime factorization. The idea here is that we sort of break down a number to its, uh, uh, you know, smaller numbers, which when mul we multiply together, they produce the same number that we have. So, to factor a number n is to write to write it as a product of other numbers. So n, uh, say for example, is you know the, the product of a times b times c and so on and so forth. So for example, one num the number 150, 150 is 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. So usually we do that by, you know, the uh, normally doing division. And we start by the smallest numbers uh, uh, greater than 1. So for example, we don't start with 1, we start with 2, 150, divide by 2 is 75, 75 divided by 2 it doesn't of course here we mean integer division without having the remainder so uh, even division sort of uh, 75 divided by 3 that's 25, 25 times divided by 2 it doesn't work, by 3 it doesn't work, by 4 it doesn't work, by 5 we have 5 and then 5 divided by 5 is 1 so the, pro the uh, factors of 150 are 2 times 3 times 5 times 5 whereas we have another idea now prime factorization this is very important so this is normal factorization, but now we are interested in prime factorization. The prime factorization of a number is writing the number as a product of prime numbers. Yes? So this is what is called, sort of, um, we'll come to that. This is called the fundamental idea, theorem of arithmetic. We'll come to that in a minute. So the prime factorization is to um, write a number as a product of prime numbers. So for example, the number... 143, it can be written as the product of the two prime numbers 11 and 13. Moving on, something that we need to be familiar with, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. What this says is, this this is by the way from Wikipedia, it says that every integer greater than 1 either is prime itself or is the product of prime numbers. So any number, it can either be prime or it can be a product of prime numbers. So for example, here, 150 it's not prime, but it is actually the product of prime numbers. 2 is prime, 3 is prime, and 5 is actually prime. Whereas 143 um, is prime. So, again, uh, I don't, is 133 is, is prime? Yeah, it is, a fa it is actually, uh, it can be factored into 2 prime numbers, 11 and 13. So, uh, yeah, the number can be either prime number or it can be factored into a product of prime numbers. So 150 again is not prime, it's um, not prime, but it can be factored into a product of five prime numbers. So again here, 
every integer greater than 1 it's either prime or it can be written as the product of prime numbers and although the order of the primes primes in the second case is arbitrary the primes themselves are not what that means is that so these prime numbers for example can be for example 5 times 2 times 3 times 5 or 3 times 2 times 5 times 3. so the order doesn't really matter but you will always when you factor it to its primes you will always uh, have the same prime numbers regardless of the order regardless the 5 comes first or 2 comes first that's what this second point here says so an example from Wikipedia uh, 1200 is the product of 2 to, power, 2 to power 4 times 3 to power 1 times 5 to power 2 Th those double star means to power same as the hat symbol what that means is, is that 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 that's 2 to power 4 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 or we can just change the order but the order isn't really important the, what is important is that we will always have the same set of or the same prime numbers uh, 1200 is not prime it's a composite number it's not prime and therefore it can be uh, uh, factored it can be broken down to a product of prime numbers this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic so the theorem here is stating that 1200 can be represented as product of prime numbers and the order of these prime numbers it doesn't really matter they will never change we'll always have the same prime numbers now moving on to the main point of the slides Fermat's little theorem what this says is that let's say we have a prime number P yes for any integer number A yes the value of uh, A to the power P minus A must be divisib divisible by P i.e. P divides the result of this expression evenly so again if, a prime, if, if we have a prime number P and we have any integer number a then the value a to power p minus a so a to power p that's a to power p that's one expression minus or that's one value minus a is that that the result of this uh, expression i say v equals a so the v here is so is a digit or is a th that result must be divisible by p ie b divide p divides that result evenly so in other words for two integers p and a such that p is a prime number a to power a to power p minus 1 is congruent with 1 modulus p remember congruence i explained it in one my, my uh, one of my previous videos so a to power p minus 1 is congruent with 1 uh, congruent to 2 i'm sorry it's congruent to 1 mod p so notice p minus 1 here and p here and we have a here which is an integer congruent to 1 mod modulus p a variant of this a variant of this theorem says that if p is a prime number and a is an integer co-prime to p i.e. the gcd of a and p equals 1 so if a is co-prime to p remember the co-primeness or the relatively prime numbers if a is relatively relatively prime uh, uh, with p then a risen to p is congruent to a mod modulus p yeah a a to power p is congruent to a modulus p now this is important it's it plays a major role in public key cryptography uh, or in primality testing in general in encryption in rsa encryption this concept or this idea plays a major role uh, another thing about Fermat's little theorem is that it's actually a special case of another theorem called Euler's rule or Euler's theorem will come to that but to just to have an example remember that the value uh, we have two numbers P and A P is a prime number A is any integer A to power P minus A the result of that must be divisible by P so to check for example here if P is prime or not what we say is we, we what we do is we choose any integer let's say for example 8 here we raise it to power p and then minus 8 so we notice that a here is 8 and p is uh, 11 if we want to check whether p is imagine p was very very large if you want to check whether p is prime or not what we do is we calculate that value and then divide by p and see whether we have we get an integer number whether p divides that evenly or not if we get a number with a fraction then 
or number with a remainder sort of with a remainder then it is not um, p is not prime or if we get remainder of 0 or the no fraction then p is prime so the result here must be a multiple of p let me get my calculator and show you how that works so I said here 8 to power 11 so let's say 8 to power 11 that number and then we say minus 8 and then we divide by 11 and then we that number divides 11 or eight, I'm sorry 11 divides that number evenly we understand that 11 now is a prime number we know already 11 is prime number because that's in the you know in the sort of beginning of the series of prime numbers but if 11 of, of P or that number 11 was too large then it's very difficult for us to do that and we'll come to a way of dealing with the exponents in one of my next videos. I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.